Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about how you can achieve a result such as this in Blender 2.8. Now this is a frag grenade. I created it. It's a culmination of about a few hours of work. And really it shouldn't take that long if you know what you're doing, but I was really messing around with these the shaders here trying to get uh, the text on there and learning some things about the node editor that pretty simple but I didn't know. Um, I'm not going to show you step by step how to achieve this because I think that's somewhat counterproductive. Now when I was brand new to Blender I loved tutorials that showed you step by step here's how you achieve this result but ultimately I don't think those are extremely helpful. Well, they are helpful but uh, the most helpful I think showing you how to do it and then letting you do it and not holding your hand through the whole process uh, for some people helps a lot. Now, if you're a brand, brand new beginner of Blender, maybe not so. Maybe you need to learn the shortcuts, the hotkeys. But if you know those and you're just struggling with how to implement the tools, then something like this could help you. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, well, first, let me show you the rendered view. And I set up a little animation here that just goes around the grenade. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. So I started with this uh sphere down here. All it was was a UV sphere and simply grabbed this top portion, extruded it up and then scaled along the Z axis to zero to flatten it out up here and then just pulled in some more edge loops with Control R to sort of sharpen these up. Even tried to use the what is it? Mean crease I believe is what it's called. Yeah, bevel weight right there. or right There, yeah bevel weight. Uh, and then here I added in two more edge loops and sort of pulled this one out, Alt-S, on its own normals to create that ridge line there. So f as far as the actual grenade body goes, it's super simple to achieve. Throw a sub-surf modifier on there, crank it up to two or three, and you got something that looks smooth, shade of smooth. There you go. Uh, this is probably the most complicated piece, and it's not that complicated over the grenade. Um, this was achieved right here using hard ops and box cutter, which you don't need those add-ons. That's at about 40 bucks worth of add-ons right there, and another 40 for the the kit ops. Uh, kit ops is free, but the definitely EV materials pack I used to shade all this. You don't need to spend any money though. You don't. You can use booleans, um, just simple the boolean modifier, and the way that works is you need something called a cutter. That's what hard ops calls it but you create a, an, an, an object and you can bevel the sides to get that curvature. You put it in there and then you use the boolean modifier and it'll cut it out. Uh, but here I started with a simple cylinder and what I did was around this halfway point of the cylinder I started I just cut it off and then I extruded them back uh, and it formed you know it was a quad back here just one big face and one long straight face here, the curvature stopped. And then I sort of pulled them in along the x-axis and that's why that little indentation got there. And then I used the bevel tool to bevel some of these corners and once I was all done with that and I got the profile that I wanted and here I did the same thing we did on that uh, grenade down there. I just pulled out one of those etches uh, with Alt-S. Once I did all that I came in and got some of these details using Booleans, and you can see there's some shading issues right here, but they actually don't really show up in the model, so I didn't fix them. Um, that could potentially be fixed by... Nope, didn't fix it. Yeah, I'm not even worried about them. Uh, and here, you just really... You can achieve that several ways. Uh, with box cutter, I'll show you how to do it. Well, that tool, that actually bevels a square... If you want to do a circle, all you need to do this, and you, again, you don't have to use box cutter, you bring in a cylinder, and then you would bevel this face or these edges over here to make it a sort of cone like shape. That's how you get that sort of detail in there. Just like that. There you go. Uh, and then I used box cutter to make that at an angle because I thought it looked cool. And then to get this little top piece, what I did was I uh, selected the faces of this right here and I shift e and then separated them by selection just duplicated them 
I added a solidify modifier on there, I believe, and then what I did was I yeah. So this is like kind of like an ingon up here, but since this isn't used in any animations or game assets, I don't care about clean topology. Uh, you know, I don't want messy topology necessarily, but I didn't care if it was super clean. And then I connected, <coughs> excuse me, I connected these uh, verts um, that were here to the side over here with J, and I did that for all of them, and then I extruded them down to sort of get this lip. And then here I just beveled that, beveled that, did the same thing here. I, I kept it a little gap here because some of my reference images had those. Uh, and then over here, something very similar. And they're kind of, there's some messy topology right here, but we don't ever get close enough in my renders to see any of this because I'm just doing some some object renders like that. So <laughs> here I did something very similar, and I extruded some faces out here. Uh, and then just extruded them down. What I did was I took this face, this face, extruded them down, beveled them, <clears throat> and then uh, this is its own object. Just created a pin, and I found something really cool you could do here. In fact, I kind of want to show you. So let's bring in a new cylinder, and I'll show you something cool you can do to get this effect here. Uh, let's see. We scale that in. We don't even have to scale that, and that's kind of how I achieved that effect. But let's pick two faces here, and then go on the other side, pick those same two, come up to edge, and then bridge the edge loops. You have a hole through your cylinder, and I never knew you could do that. Uh, the way I would have done it before would have required uh, too much labor for the same effect. So Blender has a built-in tool to help you achieve that. Uh, yep, created a pin here poked that right through. So, so far we've moved through all these, and this, I, I struggled with this. I was trying to do it on my own, and then I looked up some helpful videos that showed me how to do it, and really all you need is a circle. So you bring in a circle. Let's do that. And then you add in a screw modifier to it. And let's see. <clears throat> screw it, and then you pick a, just a different axis, and then you come into edit mode, and you can move it around, and you start to see it kind of take the shape of maybe what you want. Let's just make the screw go out a bit further. Let's bring these steps up, and you're going to have to play with this to really figure out what's going on. And then you can even change the amount of iterations you want. And you can also change the angle so it doesn't perfectly line up. If it's too far spaced, you bring it in some. You can scale it down to get it thinner. Bring it back in on the screw. Just like that, you have a... Uh, wouldn't be the pin, but the thing you pull the pin with on a grenade. Uh, here, I wanted to... I was inspired by Battlefield Bad Company. At first, I was going to add in like a smiley face here, like in Battlefield Bad Company, but I didn't want to necessarily like it to be a grenade from Battlefield Bad Company. So I was... I don't know. I was thinking World War II vibes. Uh, I just Googled a 1940s Warbird pinup and found this one, slapped it on there, thought it looked cool. Uh, oh yeah, so for this piece right here, I mean it's re really the same process, I just extruded, there was a face here, I extruded it down and then just extruded it down here actually, added in a bunch of ed edge loops, used proportional editing to make it curve and then beveled those edge loops later to make that curve even smoother and then using booleans, I created these cutouts that sort of, I think, add a lot to an otherwise boring part of the grenade. Okay, so we've moved through the modeling process. That's how you would model this grenade. <coughs> and I promise you with enough persistence, and if you have the hotkeys down, if you know the interface of Blender, you could achieve this as well and don't get caught up in these small shading issues. If you need to, come back to them later if you just can't figure it out. There were several things I got stuck on on this model and the shading process and I said, you know what, I'm gonna come back to this later so I don't waste all of my time. Uh, you know, I popped in the Blender Discord and a few other 3D modeling discords and I, I was running into some issues and I asked for help, waited a couple hours, someone got to me, but 
during that couple hours I was working on other things that I knew I was going to need to do. So I saved some time there. Then starts the fun part, the shading. Um, using the KitOps uh, definitely EV materials pack, which is a, a paid pack, I guess. I did uh, really save some time in the shading and I guess texturing process. You don't have to do that. You can you can go out and you can try to find some textures online and get those popped in there. But uh, I didn't do that. I already bought this because it's it saved me a lot of time in the past. And honestly, this is the first render I've done where I felt satisfied in that pack because I, I really spent time and I tried to utilize it correctly. So I, I was happy with that. Uh, let me go ahead and show you a few things on that front. Let's pop in here and look at what they got going on. So this was the grime material they had. But I, I ran into, I guess, an issue where I was wanting to get this text on here. And this text is actually a separate uh, Photoshop deal. I made a texture in Photoshop. Just went on to font.com, found a font I liked, popped it on there. Um, and it wasn't really meshing well with the material. I couldn't get it to mix in. And I spent so long trying to figure this out. But what you need to do is once you have a texture you want on there, you're really going to have to play around with the size of it and make sure that, um, you know, use your image editing software, Photoshop, whatever. Make sure it's a good size. You have to play around with that. But anyways, you bring in your image texture, make sure you have a mapping and a texture coordinate node there. Uh, then you're going to use the Mix RGB shader. And I was trying to apply it after the principal B BSDF. It needs to be before that. And you're going to plug that into the factor. And then this, whatever your underlying material is, whether you do that in Blender or Substance Painter, or however you do it, uh, is going to go into color. At least if you do it the way I did. And that plugs into base color. So you can see without this, that's what it looked like, actually. It's, the only reason that's there is because these are plugged into the roughness and normal maps. Alright. So for this, this was kind of tricky. The actual modeling process, not really. It was simply a cylinder with an inset face on it. <laughs> Pretty simple stuff. The outside has its own material, an aluminum shiny material. And then on this inside, I... It's actually its own separate material from this. And... Really need that mapping note here. Because I had to play around with... Uh, like if I move it, for example, you'll see it tiles. Really bad, so really just played around with the mapping area to get it exactly where I wanted it and it wasn't that it was not that hard okay I think that about covers it and then as far as the uh, the lighting setup goes I was using the easy HDRI pack and you can you can find that I'll put it down in the description I popped in an HDRI that I liked and it was this one and then uh, I have the studio backdrop here, just a random concrete texture and a camera, and this whole thing is actually on a, let's see, let's see here, this whole studio, I just pin this in, the scene, whenever I want, but it's on its, on its own thing, so I can just rotate it, um, and then you move the object wherever you want, I have a sun here, it's just kind of providing some backlighting. So yeah, uh, that's how this grenade was achieved. And if you end up following along, put down in the comments uh, your result. And uh, yeah, if if you end up doing anything like this, let me know. I think it looks pretty cool.